Today I'm going to talk about how to use TwinSafe user function blocks. Uh, they're similar to the blocks used in IEC 61131 Part 3 languages, uh, but their implementation is a little bit different. We use user function blocks when we have larger pieces of code that we want to be reusable. And more importantly, when we change that code, we want it to propagate through the entire project. So let me show you a couple ways to do that. The first way is if I have my code set up in my primary, in my group, in my SAL, I right click anywhere within the group, user function block handling and create. It's important to note that if I'm going to create a user function block this way, the project does need to be verified before you can save it as a function block. Now, what I'm going to see is a dialog box with all of my blocks. Each one of the ports under those blocks, if they have a check mark, that means that there's a variable assigned to that. That's going to be a variable that goes to the outside world of that function block. If it's gray, it means that there's a logical connection through a line, through a connector. Underneath the layout settings, if I need to go back into that block, what is it going to look like? The default is order of execution. Uh, that's cool, that's fine, uh, but it is gonna kind of move my stuff around it, and the lines are gonna look a little bit differently. Uh, I'm pretty specific about how I like my, uh, my blocks laid out, so I'm going to choose original position. That way when I open up the function block, it's gonna look exactly the way that I laid it out originally. So I'm going to say, okay. Now I can see within my SAL, all of that code has now been condensed down into my user function block. Right now it's called user FB1. That's not particularly useful. So uh, let's go ahead and make a couple of changes to make this block more uh, user friendly. We can also see that all of my inputs and all of my outputs sort of get these generic addresses that are uh, basically the name of the block that they are connected to, as well as the port that it was connected to, which again is, is not super useful. So let's make that a little bit better. So in my uh, user function block, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename it. And this is, this is uh, an example code for muting. So I'm gonna do uh, muting dot UFB. It is important that you remember to include the extension. And I'm gonna save. So now if I uh, close that, go back into my my group, you can see that I've got a new, a new name for it. Now let's deal with the naming of the inputs and outputs. So what I'm going to do is open up my function block and you can see all the variables that I had have now been replaced with those generic variables uh, automatically when I converted the SAL worksheet over to a user function block. So let's go ahead and get those changed. So um, what I know here is that the save to cup be couple is going to be sensor one and sensor two. And what I'm doing with that block is we're actually changing the names of what we've got going on down here. That's why it's asking, do you want me to delete? the uh, uh, the variable that it's replacing. Now I could go ahead and change them down here as well. So let's look at the light curtain monitoring here. Change this to OSSD1, OSSD2, restart. And this is maybe, I don't know, contactor or muting okay. And then this is going to be muting active. Uh, so this would be going to an indicator light, for example. It will add that light. We save it and we're going to overwrite. Now notice this is, this is an important bit. If I had used this block multiple times, it would have propagated through the entire project. I'm going to close that and we can see now my muting block is a lot cleaner. It's easier to reuse. So now when I choose to instantiate this block more, I just choose it from the toolbox like any other block. So here's all my standard blocks and down at the bottom, I have the block that I call muting. So we'll add some more in.
and I can use them as I normally would. Now again, let's go ahead and make a change and you can see how that change propagates out. So I'm gonna open up my user function block and let's add an additional output. Uh, maybe on the, on the final output, we'll add in an error output. Okay, save, overwrite. This is going to propagate the change. And now we can see my output added across the board. The second methodology is to actually create my user function block from scratch rather than pull it out of the SAL. So in this case, just so I've got a lot of code already, I'm going to select all this and I'm going to copy. I'm going to delete it out of my SAL. And then I'm going to add a new user function block. I'm going to rename it to something, again, useful. We'll call this one muting2.ufb. And now I'm going to paste my code in. I do need to verify that everything's uh, coming correctly. You'll see that while my layout remained the same, all of my connections are gone. So if I were going to create this up from scratch, I'd put all my function blocks in here, and then I would add in my inputs and my outputs after the fact. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to double click and say sensor one, sensor two, This is my indication, indication light. And muting OK. Oh, and then I need my light curtain. Oh, SSD one. Oh, SSD two. What this has done as I've created these is down in my variable mapping, you can see that each variable has been created and it doesn't have an assignment on the opposite side. So if it's an output, uh, the block feeding into it is there, but the usage is not for the output because we're gonna assign that in the outside world. In this case, I don't need to worry about validating the code to begin with because I need to verify the entire project after the fact or once I've got something uh, useful. So I am going to save. And now when I go into my TwinSafe uh, group one SAL, uh, some people do like to try to drag, that's not gonna work for you. Oh, that just opened it up. My group one, take this, you'll see nothing happens. What I need is again in my toolbox, down at the bottom, past all the standard stuff, I've got my user function blocks and I can drag that in and now I can start uh, instantiating this uh, the way that I want. So give it a give it a custom name and start connecting all the inputs and outputs. And again, uh, same principle applies. If I need to make a change, I'll make it in the function blocks and it'll propagate throughout my entire project. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, please like and share. To get more TwinSafe tips, tricks, how-to videos and news, Follow me on LinkedIn.